Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Michael from Nibiru News and Someone'sBones.com. I apologize for not being able to live stream last night. We had some technical issues. I hope they are fixed today. If not, I will put out a notice this evening. Today, I have something special. I have an audio interview with Dr. Diamond da Damir Zakharovich, a Russian astronomer of whom I have written several articles within the last 18 months and produced several videos uh, highlighting information that he has provided me in the last year that I put up here on YouTube. And rather than speak for him today, I am going to have Dr. Zakharovich speak in his own words. So with that, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Zakatovich. I'd like to thank you for agreeing to do this audio interview. Before we get started, I'd just like to get your permission to publicly air this video since I believe what you know might be important to a large part of the audience. Thank you, Michael. It's very good to talk to you again. And yes, you have my full consent. I was reluctant to speak, but now I feel the time has come. We have little time, but you must be aware of the looms in uh, our future. Okay. And I agree with that, Dr. Zakharovich. Before we get to the meat of the matter, uh, could you please state your education and work history for us? Mm, yes, Michael. I can tell you some of the, my working history. But I can tell you that I graduated from Lomonosov Moscow State University as a doctor in astronomical science. And since I was a young boy in Tomsk, I loved the night nice sky. When I was 13, I built a telescope and always watched the stars. After finishing my school, I worked for Soviet Space Agency and then after that stupid Gorbachev destroyed the Soviet Union I started to work at uh, Russian Federal Space Program. I left the space program to pursue my own studies. Yeah. I've heard, thank you, I've heard conflicting stories. One that, as you say, you left on your own Another story I have heard from a supposed ex-colleague of yours suggests that President Putin himself asked for your re resignation because, shall we say, you had a hard time keeping certain secrets to yourself. Would you care to elaborate on that? Well, Michael, contrary to Western state media like BBC, ABC, Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, and uh, I are still on very good speaking terms. As you know, last year he saved my life and got me out of Germany, where I was giving a lecture at an astronomical symposium. I walked up on the street in a bad, bad neighborhood. Many bad women walking around my suit was turned inside out, my passport was stamped cancelled, at the airport they said passport is no good, no Russian embassy or consulate, nothing, no cash, no card, just a dead mouse in my pocket and a note. So, very, very, very bad. But, Putin made me escape from the West. How, wow. How exactly did he do that, Dr. Zakharovich? Uh, fortunately, I cannot tell you about it, and it's not so important. All right, fair enough. Uh, let's talk about some important stuff. Can you give me a little backstory, or the audience a little backstory, on when Russia discovered Nibiru and what you might know about it? Yes. It's a very interesting topic and it's very hard to explain, but Soviet space agency discovered Nemesis star and planets using technology in early 1983 when Nemesis was totally hidden. 
NASA also made some discoveries. And there was an argue between Soviet space programs and NASA over who discovered it first. From what I have heard, it was actually quite funny. There are some stories that Andropov told Reagan about it. Interesting. Uh, I heard it was the other way around, but I'm not going to get into that kind of uh, discussion right now. But anyway, yeah, I heard it was the other way around. Don't know that. Don't know. But Russian scientists work very hard to predict when and where Nibiru will come. They arrive at conclusion that Nibiru show up at end of 2020 or starting by 2021. Exact predictions are impossible because the system is subject to gravitational stress or other spaces objects including Sun and as Nibiru gets farther from Sun it escapes the gravitational pull and begins to increase velocity while heading this direction. There are two possibilities. Passing between Earth and Sun or between Earth and Mars. Very sadly, Russian top Sitchin scientists concur, believe it was passed between Earth and Sun. Very bad. Okay. Uh, you mentioned 36... <coughs> excuse me. You mentioned... Yes. Uh, 3,600 years, and that, you mentioned two things of interest here to me. Uh, let me just think for a second. There you mentioned is, Sitchin, and I believe he, he there, used the 3,600-year figure in his writings. And it seems that besides him, that most scientists, regardless of nationality, seem to believe in the 3,600-year orbit theory. The, there is no theory, it's a fact. The system is in highly elliptical, elongated orbit relative to the southern hemisphere. And yes, all agree, so it's a proven fact, no more hypothesis. All right, interesting. Uh, let's jump back to you for a second, if we can. You work with the Soviet Space Agency from 89 to 91 and then with the Russian Space Program till 2011. A long and respectable career, if I may say so. What was your personal involvement with the project and what did it entail? Well, Michael, I was not exposed to confidential details about Nibiru until year 2004. At that time, science team experienced much frustrations because they didn't understand why other countries give different dates that are not 2020 or 2021, 22. They needed scientific liaison. A man who could carry some knowledge of this Nibiru to other countries and try to show them the error of their maths. I basically became a diplomatic scientist using my intelligence and people's skills to teach other countries including USA that they are wrong about Nibiru predictions. Fascinating. Now, knowing how obstinate scientists are, no offense meant to yourself, I mean I can imagine that was not an easy task. Well, I am ashamed to say that I met with no success. We wanted to bring other countries to parity with our knowledge, share what we have, but none of the people are willing to listen. They called us crazy idiots, saying Nibiru will come in 2020. At times, stupid NASA said 2017. And now that passed and we still hear and find mostly. Thank you. Since we're on the topic of dates, I do want to let you know that I do have another astronomical source, a former NASA employee, 
um, named Dr. Ronald uh, Ronald oh. Shimshak. Shimshak. Yeah, I know this. He's a fucking suchka. Whoa. Um, thank you. Um, hold on just a moment, please, Dr. Zakarovich. With all due respect, we have a few simple rules on the channel. One of them is we don't make, uh, we don't curse on the channel or make religious or ethnic slurs. I've upheld this since I started the channel, and I don't want to descend into darkness now. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah, I apologize. I get a little agitated and irritated when I hear this suchka, this man's name, because... Michael, you cannot trust no words from them. I'm sorry, I, I forget, Michael, but this man worked for NASA, so anything he tell you, it's disinformation. We have a phrase for Dr. Shim Shak or Suchka in Russia, no good jid. First he say Nibiru come in 2017, now he says 2055. What will be the next? 2060 or what? How can you believe these things? He's either stupid or he's indoctrinated or he's an MK ultra slave. Problem, he's not stupid. He's not stupid. Hey. Uh, do you know him personally? Oof, I, I, I would never admit to know this man, but uh, if I see him, I'll, I'll spit on ground. Oh. I find that very, very interesting. You have a strong animosity toward him. Uh, personally, I found, you know, leaving the dates out of the question, I found him to be a wealth of information. In fact, he agrees with many of your points, with the exception of the 2020-2021 arrival date. You know, Mike, he, he's a professional liar. He's programmed to say these things. All good lies contain grains of truth. All right. Well, since Dr. Shimshok is not here to defend himself, which raises an interesting future possibility, I think we should move on to another topic, if that's okay with you, Dr. Zakanovich. You mentioned his lousy name, not me. All right. Let's move on. Uh, we can move on. One of your strongest assertions is that the greatest threat to Earth comes not from Nibiru itself, but from a plethora of asteroids within the system. You've mentioned this to me before. I've written pieces about it. Would you care to give some additional information on that, please? Uh, I can't believe it. That jid that's sneaking around radio stations, lying in bureau. But enough, enough. Okay, now, now I can speak. Okay, but uh, I'm so. Let's see. The system itself is made of brown dwarf star and seven planets. Outmost orbital is what many people call Nibiru. Large planet, four times Earth size and 12 of 13 times mass. The system itself is about 257 million kilometers in diameter extremely dense clouds of red iron oxide dust surrounds the system which until recently prevented optical analysis without infrared equipment in these systems are millions of tons of space debris asteroids and micro meteorites swirling around in cosmic whirlpool normally gravitational pull of brown dwarf star and planets keeps these objects in orbit but these asteroids collide with each other and one or both are knocked from orbit into deep space sometimes toward the earth sometimes in directions towards other planets in the solar system the frequency of ejection increases and Nibiru gains speed approaching us. So in last three years alone, number of meteorites striking Earth has increased tenfold. Now that's scary. Yes, yes it is. But many are very small and go unnoticed. But meteoroid strikes will grow 100 times. And then... 5,000 times when Nibiru is here in 2020. The system also has twin tails, also with debris field, and 
Earth may pass through these debris fields before Nibiru goes this way. So, some space objects small like marbles, others big, size of Kremlin. So we get hit by 10 or 100,000 asteroids, turning Earth to putty. This is why President Putin designed hypersonic missile not to attack USA, Florida, or any part of US ground, but to deflect asteroids coming towards the motherland. Now, to me, this sounds like a, ter a terrifying scenario. Uh, pardon me, but from what you're saying, we're pretty much screwed no matter what. Well, it's possible, but with Nibiru, there is no certainty because so many variables come to play. It depends on exactly how close we are to the tail and how near Nibiru comes toward the Earth. It is indisputable fact that it will take major damage from asteroid strikes. But how much damage remains to be seen? Unfortunately, no other countries take the asteroid threat seriously. Seriously enough to create efficient programs to, I don't know, save major centers of population from a nine kilometer asteroid striking a city. This is a problem, another big problem. And if Nibiru gets real close to Earth, its strong magnetic field could fry the brain. Fry the brain, wow. Um, forgive me here. But it sounds like you are clearly describing an extinction-level event, Dr. Zakatovich. Oh, no, no, no. I, I didn't say that. Uh, I'm presenting possibilities that could occur. Not that they will occur, but only possibility. Except for the certainty of asteroid strikes, uh, geomagnetic and geophysical pole shift, which is actually happening now that will cause drastic changes to our climate. And as for extinction, humans survive before and will again, at least in Russia. Well, I hope uh, our ch chances of survival extend just beyond Russia. And I know you've only had a few minutes, you've only had a few, few minutes this morning, and you've given me a lot to ponder, and I do appreciate your time. And I hope that you will graciously allow me to contact you again, Dr. Zakarovich. Yes, Michael, of course. Uh, I wish you the best to you and your audience. And with strong belief, we can make a new way of life. And new things will be going on. You believe me. And thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure. You have a nice day. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Zakarovich. And we'll talk again next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.